What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we got a pretty big review for you. We're gonna be checking out the brand new Razer Black Widow V3 Pro Wireless. Razer's first wireless mechanical keyboard like this, and this comes alongside of a few other wireless peripherals, so I figured the hype would be real, especially for their Black Widow lineup, and a lot of you guys are keyboard lovers out there. So in this review, we'll go through it all, pros, cons, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, because there's some pretty interesting and important stuff about this keyboard, in case you're interested in picking it up or finding out if it's the next keyboard for you. I've tested this for around two weeks now. We have their green switches in this unit, and I felt like right away I got a pretty good idea of how this is going to fare in the end. So first up, just taking a look at it, the V3 Pro, like I said, full-size mechanical keyboard, and it has some popular features found on previous releases from Razer, but now in this wireless variant. And it does utilize Razer's very own hyperspeed wireless technology, which is also found on some of their other gaming mice. So that's gonna give the V3 Pro that ultra low latency. It's gonna perform as good as wired keyboards. And I'll show you that in a little bit. Just first talking some physical features and stuff like that. When you first power it on, on the left side of the keyboard, you actually have two modes of connectivity the 2.4 gigahertz with the included dongle and a Bluetooth option. You can also choose to use this wired if you want because on the back side, the port there is USB-C. The included dongle is also housed on the back side behind this little cover. So you plug that in, you download Synapse and you'll be good to go. Returning on the top right of the keyboard is that multifunctional digital dial. I love this. Plus you have the dedicated media keys. And I think we first saw this debut back in the Huntsman Elite in 2018. So happy to see those features included now, yet again. And that dial can be reprogrammed to be whatever you want. It doesn't have to just be a volume dial, although volume dials are always clutch. In terms of build quality here, we have a mix of plastic and the aluminum top frame. Visually, I think it looks pretty clean with the matte finish it has to it. But like we've seen before, and this is also pretty typical, keeping it clean could be an issue just because it loves to attract fingerprints and smudges. The wear becomes pretty evident. On the bottom, you have their Shine Through Razor logo that also changes and glows in unison with whatever effect you have. And inside the box, they include a nice leatherette wrist rest. It's that same memory foam wrist rest that they've had on previous keyboards over the last year. And I definitely think it's one of the more comfortable ones out there. It does butt up against the front lip of the keyboard though, where the logo is, so you probably will be covering that up anyways. Next, we can move into the goods, which are the switches and keycaps. This unit does have those texture double shot ABS keycaps, which do have this nice slight texture on it, adds a bit of grip and stuff to that finish. The font's also nice and clean yet again. Some people will be sad that these keycaps aren't PBT, which is understandable because Razer does make a PBT keycap set, so kind of confusing. But then underneath the keycaps is where we have something kind of new. No, it's not their Opto mechanical switches, unfortunately, but a redesigned top shell to their switches. So as you may notice, the top shell now is see-through. This is supposedly supposed to increase, you know, RGB lighting to make it shine brighter and stuff. Uh, but when the caps are on, I really didn't think it made too much of a difference. And plus with that diffuser there um, in the switch itself, that's where the main RGB glow is gonna come from. So it does kind of leave me scratching my head a little. One, because again, it's their regular switches, not optomechanical ones. And two, uh, when gaming, they kind of fell a bit loose to me. And when I say that, I mean that while I was gaming, I noticed my fingers were, you know, moving a bit more than normal on the keycaps. And that's because the actual switches themselves aren't as sturdy as I hoped. And I know as dumb as it sounds, a lot of YouTubers like to do this thing to kind of crap on Razer, which is a Razer keyboard shake test. Uh, I don't get it, but in this case, you can hear the shaking and the rattling. And that's because again of the switches. And when I did check, yeah, like I said, there's a fair bit of play vertically with the stem, not so much side to side because the stem itself has those walls on the side. And it's just odd because I would have thought these would have been more solid and snug against their new shell that they manufactured. Uh, honestly, in the end, it's not gonna be a big deal to 90% of consumers out there, but I did wanna mention it because I noticed it. Now, like I said, these traditional green switches aren't new. It's the same 50 gram actuation force with a four millimeter travel distance and a 1.9 millimeter actuation force, but they're also gonna be releasing this keyboard with their silent yellow switch. And those are supposed to have new silicone dampeners inside, like we saw on the new linear optomechanical switches. So again, just really doesn't make sense to me why we have traditional switches in here and not their optomechanical switches, which are a lot faster, the more reliable, they're more power efficient as well, since there's no metallic contact transferring that signal to your PC. I just really don't get it. I figured their optomechanical switches would have been the new norm. So 
I don't know. Regardless, we'll do a sound test of their traditional green switches here. So as you heard, lots and lots and lots and lots of pinging with the stabilizers, and they also weren't really consistent when you'd press them. And just due to the construction here with the housing of the keyboard, that pinging really resonated, and they also don't factory lube their switches. So uh, you can combine that with the old green switches, and uh, personally, it's left a lot to be desired for me. And real quick, I'll show you to some of the RGB effects in a darker setting, so you can kind of get a feel for how the uh, RGB looks and stuff like that. You have that consistent shine through with the characters on the keycaps, which is nice, but it's definitely not the brightest RGB keyboard on the market, which again is also why I'm not really understanding the new crystal shell when it doesn't really make much of a difference because we already have that diffuser built in. It's just not adding much overall. And I'm not gonna go over Synapse. Again, I've been showing Synapse off for what, four years now? You know what it is. Is, you get the idea, people would skip over it anyways. But obviously, another big important factor here is gonna be performance. That's gonna be, you know, one of the main attractions to this particular keyboard is the fact that it's wireless. And with their wireless hyperspeed technology, and the fact they claim it's 25% faster than the competition, I know for me, I could say while testing, I 100% did not notice any sort of lag or latency while gaming. After all, it is 2020, we've been seeing wireless peripherals become more the norm over the last few years or so, and people have kind of, you know, started to make that shift without worrying about their performance taking a hit, you know, because that's really the main reason why someone wouldn't want to switch to wireless, right? If it kept cutting out or was noticeably delayed. Uh, but now, those issues are a thing of the past, and for me, it felt as normal, or as, you know, what I'm used to with a wired keyboard. In in fact, I did a bit of testing. I compared the input lag with my wired K95 Platinum keyboard, as you can see, mashed the keys on each keyboard for about a minute. You're seeing the inputs there real time. When I was done, I compiled them all, calculated it, and it adds up because I averaged 32 milliseconds response time input with the K95 and 33 milliseconds with the Black Widow V3 Pro. What does that mean, you're asking? It means there's no noticeable difference at all, wired versus wireless here. Well then, how about battery life? That's also gonna be another important factor when it comes to a wireless keyboard. And the V3 Pro is gonna boast 192 hours of battery life. That's eight straight days, but that's with RGB turned off. So obviously RGB lighting turned on, it's gonna, you know, take a pretty big hit to the battery life overall when enabled. And it drains the keyboard in as little as five hours if you have it on 100% brightness on the static white effect. But good news is when I was charging it up with their included USB-C cable, it goes pretty quickly, seeing a 20% charge in just 10 minutes. And I was admittedly pretty surprised by that. And speaking of being surprised, I was also caught off guard at how easily this lost connection, which is a bit of a bummer. And when I say that, uh, when I'm filming, you know, I film right here at my desk. And as you can see, my PC right behind me, it's probably 12 feet and it loses connection right here. So I couldn't have my dongle plugged into the PC and just change the effects over there, film here. I actually had to plug in my dongle to a laptop, download Synapse and do it all right here because it just kept cutting out 12 feet behind me. Don't know if that's just my unit or if that is some sort of connection issue, but again, for a lot of people who are just using this at their desktop setup, it won't be a big deal. But for somebody who is maybe using this for a home theater PC or an entertainment setup in their living room and their PC is farther than 10, 12 feet away, where it's gonna be cutting out, 
that's a big issue. Uh, it's just, I just found that really weird because 12 feet with no interference, I feel like it should have connected. Again, could be just my unit, but this review is a review of my experience. So bringing this all together here, okay? Quick pros and cons of a little recap here. All together, full-size wireless keyboard with no latency or lag when it's you know not cutting out. Great dedicated media keys, that multifunctional dial, and really great battery, again, for a wireless mechanical keyboard. But the cons, okay? This is $230, which is a premium price tag for what they're gonna be, you know, labeling a premium, you know, flagship keyboard, but it still doesn't feature their premium flagship switches with Optomechanical. And that I think is just a killing factor to this. Having traditional switches here isn't right. We should have Optomechanical switches in a keyboard in 2020 at a price tag this big. And as you heard, those stabilizers are booty. So in the end, for $230, I, uh, I can't say I recommend it. This left me scratching my head more often than not. Too many things I would personally change, and that is just a way too hefty of a price tag for a keyboard like this right now in 2020 with these features, or lack thereof necessarily, with the switches and stuff like that. It's just, it's too pricey, honestly. So that'll wrap it up for my review. If you wanna check it out, regardless, I'll put a link for you in the description down below. If you like this review, give it a big thumbs up, show your support, if it helped you out, all that good stuff. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed, have a good day.